one. Live from the Eagle Newsroom, this is the Texas A&M Game Week preview with Sam Houston State. I'm Travis Brown with the Eagle alongside Robert Cessna, well, virtually alongside. And we have Colton Foster of the Huntsville Item on here. He covers Sam Houston State, uh, the football team. Well, let's get right into it, Colton. What's the main storyline for the Sam Houston State team as they come into their first game of the season? You know, the main storyline for this Bearcat team is just going to be what is the offense going to look like? And, you know, brand new quarterback, brand new offensive coordinator. Um, everything's going to be changed. A whole new offensive line. Uh, no more Ramon Jefferson. You bring in a transfer running back. Uh, it's basically just going to be what can this offense do, you know, being completely rebuilt. You know, and Colton, yesterday in the Zoom, what stood out to me, you don't really zero in on opponent when you cover a team until the week of the game. And I, I know how good Sam Houston State's been the last decade in the FCS, but man, they lost a lot of players. What, what do you think the talent level is for this team compared to other years? Um, I think compared to, you know, the last two years, uh, they're going to take a hit, but you still bring back guys like Cody Crest and you bring back Markel Perry, you bring back some of the leaders. Um, and their big thing this year has been building a standard. And you've got those guys that are trying to help keep the standard that they've had these last couple of years. You're on mute. Do you think it's better for them to play A&M the first game as opposed to third or fourth when they're breaking in so many new players? And let's be honest, I don't think they're going to sneak into Kyle Field because it's A&M's opener. So I think they will get A&M's best shot. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily the, you know, best way to open a season is with the, you know, the number six team in the nation, but I mean, it's kind of one of those things, uh, who else would you open with you next week? They play Northern Arizona. I mean, do you open with them and then play an a and I don't know if it really, you know, changes anything, uh, playing wise. So yesterday, a lot of talk when you're when you're talking about going against a ms defense and really just the offense in general, a lot of the focus was on the wide receiver core, um, some some veteran guys there. What, what is it about that wide receiver core that that makes uh, the, the Bearcats feel like that they'll, they'll be able to to click on offense? Um, you know, guys like Cody Crest and Ife Adey, Ife is just a playmaker. He makes plays. Uh, I mean, he caught the game winning national championship touchdown. Uh, he just makes he he just is a smart player and can just make plays with his athleticism. Cody, Cody's a great leader and can haul in everything. Um, it'll be really interesting to see, though, just kind of what happens outside of them. Um, you know, they've it looks like they've switched Noah Smith more to a wide receiver role than he has been in previous years. Um, but I think outside of those two, it'll be interesting. But I think that there's a strong enough core that everybody is just kind of getting in line and following suit of what their leaders have shown them. You know, you mentioned that uh, who you thought the quarterback might be, you know, he doesn't want to kill or doesn't want to say who the starting quarterback is since they are playing A and M. Uh, and do you think they're going to, we're going to play the second quarterback quick or, you know, he mentioned he don't want the guy looking over his shoulder. So does that mean you stick with the starter no matter what until late in the fourth quarter? I don't know. Um, I guess they're not releasing anything competitive advantage. I'm not, I'm not sure. I have the feeling that it's going to be uh, Jordan Yates just from everything they're saying. Um, I feel like if it was Keegan, you go ahead and say it. Um, but I, I don't think they will. I think you let them take their knocks and you kind of see what they can do facing some adversity. You know, it was an interesting point yesterday. They were talking about piping in a, uh, 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 crowd noise uh, to kind of simulate Kyle field, simulate the fans on top of them. But they did mention playing in the Fargo dome uh, and places like that up North where there is those domed environments can get really loud. Do you, do you see this as maybe a team that um, will, will, will be able to compensate for the noise, the atmosphere because of some of those situations? I know there it's not a hundred thousand people, but it is echoey. It is a dome. It is a, a different environment. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever made it out to Bowers, but, you know, they probably average, you know, just a few thousand. Um, you know, you're talking probably 10 times, maybe 11 times the amount of people that you would normally have on a Saturday. I think it will be a shell shock. Um, you know, you can pump in all the noise you want, but it doesn't, you know, nothing's going to equate to, you know, the walls rocking inside Kyle Field and, 
you know, everybody in their maroon and everything like that. Um, I think it'll be really interesting and I think it'll be kind of cool to see how they react to it. What, what about the dynamic? I'm interested because like you mentioned the veterans and one of those veterans is like Trevor Williams. He's a local kid from a and Consolidated. It's done so well for them. And, and you, you mentioned, you know, on the line, the, the wide receivers. What about the dynamic of, you know, Sam Houston State, can just almost pencil them in for at least the quarterfinals go in the playoffs. They're making a transition up to, you know, to division one. Uh, they won't have the, you know, the playoffs this year. Uh, they're just, they're just playing nine games. How do you think the players are going to handle that? And so does that mean to me that like, this is our biggest game of the year. They, they don't have any playoffs to look forward to no bowl game. Uh, it's got to be a strange dynamic since, you know, since very team, very, very few teams go in this season, knowing they're just going to play the regular season and that's it. You know, that's that's been a, a question I've asked pretty much everybody. Um, Media Day asked Keeler, Trevor, and Cody the same, you know, the same thing. Basically, uh, the same answer is you're building the building the culture. Um, you know, every year Keeler's motto was we're playing for championships. That's the standard. Now the standard is creating, you know, the standard of what what they have. Um, I, I don't know how it goes on after, you know, week two. Um, week one, I assume you're pumped up, you're playing A and M you know, you're at Kyle field, you're playing, you have a chance. If you, you know, you play lights out, you can knock off a top 10 team. Um, but after that, I just, I don't understand how it goes. I mean, you play in Northern Arizona and then you play a transferring or a, a transitioning D one in Texas A&M commerce. Um, I, I don't know how you suit up for things like that, but I, I just assume, you know, week one, when you're going against that, the Aggies, you just go in head first, ready to go and, you know, show that you can belong. What would you see as some of the the deficiencies of this group or some of the biggest question marks? Where are some places A&M might be able to uh, exploit exploit quickly um, if those things don't necessarily click? Um, Sam Houston's youth, um, they're going to be young. Uh, their offensive line is completely rebuilt from previous years. You know, you have a, a strong defensive line. It's can, probably going to wreak havoc. Um, and, you know, they won't name a starting quarterback, but what's that relationship going to be like with the center um, transfer from Oklahoma state at running back in Desmond Jackson. What's the communication going to be like there? I really just think it's going to be how this youthful team kind of responds to the challenges they have. And, you know, like y'all said, it's not necessarily an easy matchup in your first game. Yeah. Colton, you know, Keeler talked yesterday twice about, Hey, you know, our, our guys don't get on the bus unless you're going over thinking you're going to win. Okay. You're, you're different. You're going to get in the car. You're going to get your mileage money. You're going to get a good <laughs> meal. You know, what do you think is a realistic uh, goal for this is, is uh, Sam Houston state team on Saturday? Um, I honestly, to me, I think your goal is to hang around uh, like first quarter, second quarter. I assume, you know, the standard they want is to go in and show they can belong and win. Um, but I think as long as you're, you know, within a couple scores at halftime, I assume you kind of go in and consider that a win. Do you, do you go out and watch uh, a lot of practice? Cause my question is, we don't know if a and M is particularly healthy at every position because we go out and see four segments and nothing goes on. You can't report the guys that are wearing red or not doing anything is, you know, Sam Houston State has a lot of newcomers, but is everybody healthy as far as you know? As far as I know, everybody's healthy. I know it kind of got mentioned a little bit yesterday. This is their first full off season um, since the pandemic. It's one of those things that uh, for the most part, there's been limited injuries. And I think what there is, it's just precautionary. Well, Cease, if you don't have anything else, I think that's all the time we have. Uh, Colton, thanks so much for joining us. Where is the places... Twitter, the internet, that, that people can find your work Ooh. if they want to get a little bit more uh, uh, up and up, up more information on Sam Houston. Uh, so you can find all my, find all the work online at itemonline.com or you can find me at Twitter at Colton Foster ninety eight. Yeah, and one and one last thing, what's what's the community? I mean, I know this is the thirteenth time uh, they're playing A and M. There's a lot of Sam Houston State grads in Bryan College Station in the media. We know a lot of them here at our office. We got some, you know, Sam Houston State grads. What's what's the? Is there a buzz up there? People excited that they're playing the number six ranked team in the country? 
I mean, somewhat on Twitter, um, there's a little bit of buzz about it. Um, however, I've kind of joked with some friends before about how there's going to be a lot of a lot of Sam fans there at the game. They'll just be wearing maroon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, overall, I mean, there's a buzz. I think I know the students are happy. I know they're excited. I mean, after all, it is an experience just to go to Kyle Field. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things that Sam fans kind of they're here for the good stuff. But then once you go and play, a, you know, other schools, it's just kind of they fall off. Um, but overall, the the chatter on social media has been strong. Well, Colton, thanks so much for giving us a few minutes of your time. Uh, and uh, we'll be able to see you this week. Be sure to check out Colton's stuff uh, and, and get ready for the game. And uh, be sure to check the eagle.com, uh for all of our preview work heading up to Saturday's big matchup. Uh, for everyone watching this video, thanks for watching. And if you're listening on the My Aggie Nation podcast, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you next week.